Call the meeting to order 5 p.m. May 13th. And the first item on the agenda is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from April 17th. Anyone I move wanna... that we accept the minutes. Okay. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to approve the minutes. Hearing no other discussion, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Aye. Brenda? Aye. Joyce? Joyce? Oh, she's gone. She must have died. All right. Betty? Aye. And myself, I, so it's your madness. Anyways. No, so she's trying to log back in yet? Or? Not yet. Okay. Once it comes up, I'll All right. Well, moving on, the next item is to review the most recent draft of the personnel bylaws with additional comments. Um, Susan, as long as you're here, do you want to go over your comments that you? Huh. Um, I did not send them to everyone, but I will talk my way through them. That under in section 3B, 4B, cost of living adjustments, we still have that we will provide that to the finance committee no later than March 1st and everywhere else we change that to say during the annual budget process. Right. Um, the next one under compensatory time is just a note for Tricia uh, that it's a partial sentence there, so we'll ignore that. Okay. Um, break periods. It does the specimen. It, it says everyone's entitled to two paid 10 minute breaks, but it doesn't specify, or at least not that I saw, how many hours the person has to work to qualify for the two 10 minute breaks. So, do you get 10, you know, two 10 minute breaks if you're only working you know, for a couple of hours? It's um, six hours, is the law. Is, is that, I don't, I, yeah. This is my screen. I can't have the document open at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if it's clear. Yeah. Um... If it helps, it's 3K, Roman numeral 3K, break periods. Yeah, it doesn't seem to say anything about six hours or any minimum amount of time. Okay, so we probably want to... So do we want to just insert full time, you think? Full time employees. Well, I what you what you said earlier was if you're working a six at least six yeah. hours. Yeah. This applies if you're I, working five and a half. It doesn't apply. Is that, uh, I don't think we would right? a full time. Well, I mean, it, our definition of full time employee is a lot less than that. So, isn't it? Isn't it um, more than four hours. No, right, so if you get so there's a difference between a full time employee and a benefit employee. So a benefited employee is twenty hours or more. A full time employee is thirty five or forty. 30, right. Thir so what do you thirty? Right. Some of us are forty. Some of you are thirty. So um, yeah. So I think we should end say a minimum of six hours a day. Right, because even if you're full-time, if you happen to be working a half day right, or something like that. So when you're working six or more hours in a day, 
And that could be as, as simply as simple as that, way that phrase, an yeah. employee working. And this is yeah. this is a, a last law. Yeah, I gave it to you a couple of meetings ago somewhere. So, because Amy had asked about it. Right. Yeah. And, you mean that the point I'm it's I find, I think when we talked about it before, it seemed like you know those people like for instance, if someone was to be needing to go out and take a smoke break, that's what that's. Whereas, yeah. whereas, in, like in the case of presently, my department, we get we just do one break a day, and it's a fifteen minute break. And so it's scheduled. It's the language there says it's scheduled at the discretion of the supervisor anyway. And if they all agree to that, and that's your current practice, that's fine too. Here in town hall, it's a little different. Right, and again, it's also a scenario where in my department. When we're, we're, we rely on the working as a team in yeah. most operations, whereas here, a, a department head can take a break whenever they want. It doesn't have to be at the same time as another employee right. here. Right. Whereas in my department, it has to be pretty much. Not every day, but most days it has to be. So it's... But in this building, the supervisor is the person. It's not like they have a bunch of staff that they're right, coordinating. So I think as long as that doesn't outlaw our case current practice <laughs> and just inserting the 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 phrase okay. uh, when an employee works six yeah. hours or more per day. Okay. So you have you have that line. Yeah. All right. So we're good there. I'm good. I'm fine with that. Um, under health insurance, which is section Roman numeral four A, we specify the percentage that the town is contributing for insurance. We've we've added the that I think you know, the HMO was we're contributing seventy five and PPO seventy or something like that. Do we have to specify that? Because that's something that may change year to year as, you know, if premiums go up, we pick up more. If it's not in the policy, we don't have to worry about adjusting the policy. We, I would imagine we have more flexibility to adjust that as needed. Do we have to have it in the policy? I the actual almost, number. I would almost think so to say yes. I mean, how if, the reason I'm saying that is first of all, if you don't tell an employee what the percentage is in writing, I guess you just do it verbally or but if this also we have there's not nothing is ever gonna change with on a short-term basis anyways, because it will always be tied to contracts. Can't change, not gonna change the, the percentage that the town pays for the school employees without going through contract negotiations. And that affects, mm -hmm. that affects everybody. So whatever happens at the school dictates what the rest of us are. Well, you know, it requires a town meeting change to change the contribution. Yes, town meeting as well, but before you, but also contract negotiations with teachers, you just can't go and change their. So I looked at this as whether or not it's too specific and just says that the town contributes a percentage of the cost of plans, depending whether you're on an HMO or PPO. I mean, and then when they, employees meet they find out but okay i mean it looks like a prior meeting you had is that in red to someone do you have a copy i have is it in red yeah i'm looking at the copy with if it in red in, yeah if it's in red that means you changed it at a previous meeting because see where it says a percentage of and 50 percent is crossed out yeah that means if you at some point discussed it and changed it. Okay. 
Yeah, my my, my right, point but... is, are we are we making trouble for ourselves by having it in here? Because I understand Keith's point that it'll be negotiated in the contracts, but if we change it, we have to then go back and change the policies, which is a different approval process. Well, I mean, it just is the select board approving it, right? This is the policy of the select board. So I'm not sure that that's particularly onerous. Okay. I mean, this I, is I guess not I'm, one that I'm, I feel strongly I'm, about. Yeah. Me neither, honestly. <laughs> okay. I just like out and figuring you know, kind of whatever makes the most sense to do. I'm trying to remember back because uh, one of the early, early years when I was on the select board, we uh, we hit, we went back 5% on what we were contributing. And I know we got in trouble with the schools for that because we'd forgotten that you had to, because um, uh, they were in negotiations and we didn't do the right procedure for that. Um, but uh, it was something that the selectmen had to approve at the time. So it seems like we probably did make that change to the personnel policy at the time. So I mean, if we if we want to leave it, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. I think it's fine too. It's just like as Trisha has pointed out so many times, like someday we're not going to be here, and it is the select board's policy, so it's not our problem. But maybe someone should call it to their attention, like keep track of this because you, you got a promise in your employee handbook that might not be met, and then you got a lawsuit. So, um, yeah, I agree, it's not a big deal, but probably none of us will be here when it ever becomes an issue, if it ever becomes an issue. Maybe none of us left. It just should be brought to their attention, I guess. It's their policy, but it's a long policy. So they, uh, yeah, that's just my feeling is that you're going to leave it in there. No one's going to remember that you, someone might have to change that if, you know, there's a change in the union, the school contract. But. Yeah. Um, um, so am I satisfied to leave that the way it is? That's fine. I mean, if, if that's what the group wants, that's I'm okay with that. And then my last comment, Appendix P, Access Control Policy. I have a micro comment, and then I realize it's really a macro comment, which is, this is how the IT, and we had... Uh, we had decided to adopt, I think it was North Attleboro's policy. Yeah, North yes. Andover, yeah. Or, okay, and North Andover. However, we have this in two different places and they now don't sync. That the North Andover policy is earlier on, not in the appendices, but in the appendix, we still have the old version. So my immediate notion was our requirements for passwords don't match. We need to make these sync. And then I realized that the one in the appendix is still referencing an IT department. And I'm like, why are we being redundant here? Is it possible to just have it in here once, possibly as a the, the, the North Andover version, possibly as appendix P, and then early on just have a brief statement that says, Technology security is an important priority. See Appendix P. Because we're not syncing with ourselves right now. Does yeah, that make I, sense? Thanks, Susan. Because I never, I just pasted in the new technology policy in the major part and never went. I didn't think it was repeated all over again in the appendices. So I never deleted it. I never struck. I never struck it. So oh. that's why they are two different things talking yeah. to each other. I but like I the North just... Andover one that we adopted. Yeah, I just yeah. Not, I'm not sure which place it belongs in. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it simpler to just delete Appendix P? I mean, if there's nothing we would want to add to the North Andover policy, um, 
then it seems like I, I delete think appendix Q. I agree, Joyce, because I think it's something employees should read while they're reading the bulk of the policies and not tag it at the end. You yeah. Know? Um, so, um, and since P's at the end, that would be good. Right. There's only That's one fine. thing after it, which is the acknowledgement of receipt. So we rename that appendix. Q becomes P. Then, uh, Yeah, so I just do All right, well, that. it makes it shorter by one, two, three, four, <laughs> five pages. Five pages shorter. All right. All right. We're all set with that. Thank you, Susan. Sure. So that was it for what I had. Okay. So Lynn had done some comments earlier that we went over and the chicken scratches that you see are mine um, about unemployment, she said we're self-insured. The language that we have in the policies now doesn't say anything contrary we still have to pay whatever the state established rates are for somebody that goes on unemployment. So there's right. nothing contrary. So um, so I think what we have is fine. Okay. Um, we just pay the whole thing when it happens. Yeah, depending right. for unemployment, yeah. But we submit it to the state and they tell us for the well, category yeah. of employee right. is what the, the, the wage is. And then the retirement, I didn't get a chance to check, but I'm sure if this is what it says, then um, I'll go back and change the language in that section. Okay. Um, and then I did look at the sick leave, and that's something that I raised in my comments that I assume if you just want to hold till we go over my comments, because I think, and I think, um, Susan raised it too, so we can have a big discussion. Okay. And then, and then, this is pretty much what I said as well: is let's try and get it adopted and make the other changes, the redundancy and whatever. You know, Pete has some HR experience. And, you know, people as we live with it, we can thin it out. Okay. Your notes, Christian. Oh, no, I, you know what? I have the original. So I can't say I never had RC color. No, no, I have the original. So it's okay. okay. So, um, so you could see, so all the red were the culmination of everything you have done as a committee up until I had a look at it. And then we met and looked over additional reviews for department heads, Lynn and um, Cindy had comments. And, um, and then I put my comments in that appear in blue. Um, and Susan, I got your comments and they're not purple. They came through as green on mine. Oh. But <laughs> and they were just happy at it, so I didn't feel like it was worth making a fuss with everybody. No. They said, where are the purple? Where are the purple? And I was like, oh, green's a new color. Those must be Susan's. <laughs> so, um, so again, like Susan pointed out, once we get it done, we can deal with all the ABCs, one, two, three, fours, and I'll have Jess help me with that. Because after a certain period, your eyes start to they glaze, glaze over. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so um, my pagination, as Brenda points out, doesn't um, reconcile 
as we've done various sort of recreation. So I'm just using the one I had at Divergent 2. So the first one um, that I just had an additional question on, and I don't know if folks had any questions up until that, was content of records, which was... Training. Is it under training? Three. The question is, who's going to be responsible for providing compliance training on records to the police? Well, I don't know where you are. In the middle of your sheet where it says questions. On oh, I was day. starting with um, issues and then going in that order. If everybody was comfortable striking psychiatric etc. Do you want to start there or do you want to jump down to training? Where however you want, it doesn't matter. Where do you let's just start with issues then. Okay. So under contact of records we um say access to the records and what will be held as the records and we include psychiatric records and I'm suggesting we just Strike that all together. Okay. Yep. okay. Fine. Yes. Okay. And then um, I don't know how long you've had these draft bylaws, but the law on uh, military record is changed and it became much more restrictive in terms of. Uh, discharge records and what you can and can't get. So I just changed the record. You can only get like a letter of discharge and even a dishonorable discharge now is limited. So um, I just tightened that up. Okay. Um, so we have some language that's interesting about how all new employees will be trained on compliance with records for new employees. I think it's important that we identify a person throughout the bylaws where it says the town. I know a lot of references. We took out the person, which I think was good, and said the town. But um, when we hold the employee accountable for receiving training, and therefore that's giving them notice for which they become liable if they have a violation of it later for discipline, Plenary purposes, we should be able to go back to the person and know who that was that provided the training. So you folks would probably know best who the best person in town would be to provide that compliance training on records. And I have a person in mind, but I thought. Presently, when it comes to the majority of like benefits and stuff and changes it, it usually goes through the treasure collector because they're the ones that are handling monetary changes and when we have open involvement things things of that nature that's the that's the go-to person for that but so that's amy and i did include that and inserted that title into some of the more benefit related stuff, but this is a little different. It can be the treasure collector and they can hit it during orientation. Um, and, and that's fine. I know, I'm just wondering, would it make sense for two signatures, one from like, Treasure collector, and then one from the, from the department head. Or I don't want to complicate it, but I, although when it comes to just re referring to the personnel policy, it's I think that the treasure collector can be aware of what's in the you know and be the one that does that. 
So let me read you what it says. The town requires all new employees to undergo training on compliance with the town's records management policy. Thereafter, employees may receive periodic training on the policy. So that's more than that's just, more than hey, yes, this is. is what you can get in the file. And this is. That would be more in reference to an HR department, which we don't have. So, they yeah, so that, in thinking about this, I'm thinking about it. There. I don't know why there needs to be training on it. Any thoughts on that? I mean, you talked for like four, five sections about it anyway, so 11 sections about it. I don't know why, but I'm open to people's thought. I'm still actually trying to find the file where your changes are in blue and the other changes are in red. I've got one where all the changes are red, but that's from April. And um, I, I thought that I, I sent, did you, I, we sent it out when we were trying to schedule this meeting, Joyce. So. I also sent all the attachments again. Okay, but this, not yeah. And, it's, um, it's yeah, so I'm, I'm looking through those files and, uh, and like the attachments on that email weren't at the usual, like a bunch of things at the bottom and so yeah, I, I think it's the second them a different way. I think it, I'm, it's the one I'm looking at in blue and red because I, I didn't want to print out what's identified as final when five minutes ago I printed out what I thought was final. So I think it's the second to last version we got. I don't know, at least in my string of emails and piling up. Yeah, I right got now. one. Yeah, so Jessica, that has a file. Final 229 is crossed out and it says 5124 at the top of the page. Five one twenty four. I see yeah. some things that say five thirteen twenty four. Well, uh, yeah, person. That's what I'm trying to see what I said. Um, but I the, there's something called personnel committee meeting materials, but that's a yeah. PDF. It's not a word document. Yeah, there's multiple um documents in there. So whatever I said right. today at thirty eight, it should have. The agenda, the personal committee meeting minutes, the meeting materials, and then there's two, there's three word documents at the end. One of those. Yeah, word I see the three word documents, but none of them say that they're the, the one that says final draft policy says two twenty nine twenty four. Got to be it. Yeah, that's that's it, Joyce probably. And then when you open it, it's going to say five one on it. Okay. Because that's the one that would not download. So that's the other. Ah. Uh, that might be a problem on my end. So I'm trying to download it again. Okay. Thanks. Problem. Should be that. I just yeah. looked at my phone, so I can't yeah. know. Again, going to me, this seems more of a, an HR department, which we don't have a set aside HR department. We presently don't require any training for new employees on the personnel. Yeah. Well, there's two options as I see, either delete it or in the absence of an HR department, you make the select board's office responsible for it. It's uh, informational training, so it doesn't require department head or whatever. So I mean, Jess could do it with a new employee or something like that. But once it's in the bylaws, you're ostensibly committing to do it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't, think it's something that's that earth shattering that what does the town clerk send out is it the um for every new employee to they have to watch it and then sign a paper is it the, the town clerk could it be something that she's sending along with that and that it obviously doesn't have to be signed but can that, that be something that I mean, she already sends that out for every year, year for employees, correct? Could that be something that she sends out to new employees? 
that's for that. a two-year certification. So new employees would get it for sure. Yeah. And then once you run it, you have to do it every two years. The sexual harassment policy is annual. So, I mean, once these get adopted, um, you know, we'll have to chart what is actually compelling us to do on a calendar, fiscal year yeah. basis to do that. And then also there should be a new employee checklist that's generated yeah. from this. And then we can do an employee recruitment and selection checklist, which is really great about <laughs> distilling this 100 pages into little checklists for everybody. And then they can just go to the manual to refer yeah. to. I was just, I couldn't remember. I knew yeah. that there was something that we sent out that for employees yeah. that needed to be signed. I just couldn't remember what it was. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think you're in any exposure or liability if you delete it all together. But that it's your call. Okay. At, at the same point, the way you just described everything there, that push me, pushes me more back to thinking it should be under the select board and whoever, either town administrator or somewhere in that aspect, whether it's the assistant or someone should be doing that versus. Yeah. Or we could leave it in, stick in uh, the town fire under about training. Um, with the town's records through the select board's office and then leave it for Pete to uh, address. Is that okay? Yep. Can we go with that? I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay, personnel leave. And this is something that I run into a lot is the policy just says you get so many personal days a year, but it doesn't say in what increments you can take it in. And I've seen in the absence of it, people take it in 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Under... I have that as a comment for myself under section 3C, paid personal leave, the language presently says you can only take it in half day increments. Yeah, I thought we discussed that previously. Yeah, I thought we had a, something in there. Yeah. I agree, but that's presently that last vision we received, that's what it says. Only Well, I put that in. Okay. Yeah. So is it someplace else that I missed it that it said that anyway? Because there's so much. Oh, what I think it meant to say is it couldn't be taken in less than half a day. That's yeah. That's what it should say. I think we wanted it to say either a full day or a half day, correct? Either eight that's or what I. Hours. That's my take on it. Yes, that's. You can take a whole, whatever your scheduled day is, take a whole personal day off, or you can break it into a half of that. Yeah. Is that the current practice? I don't have anybody that doesn't, then when they take a personal day, they take the whole thing. Yeah, right. that's, it's either or, that's right. Yeah. And that's traditionally the way it's done, but again, in the absence of specifying it. I think, I think it should say um, somehow that it can be broken down to a, a minimum of a half a day. Okay. So that it's not going to be 15 minutes or 20 or a half an hour or anything of that nature. So I know I put it in one place, but since I made that judgment, I wanted to make sure I brought it to the committee. All right, so we're good on that. Didn't it not say a minimum of half a day, but either a half a day or a whole day, so people aren't keeping track of 20 minute increments, or is that not, is that what we're saying anyway? Maybe I missed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. exactly. So um, bereavement, this is just an FYI, you only give three days here for immediate family. I don't want know if you want to do a major policy or whatever, but um, I had already suggested this, and this is one of the things our new town administrator brought up when they were negotiating their contract. Uh, three days for an immediate family member is really not a lot. It might be something you might want to consider. I'm just throwing it out there. 
I tend to agree everywhere that I've worked, it's been five days for immediate. It's generally the person's gone a week. You know, it's just a week and they may have to travel to. Yeah, that's okay. exactly why. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I would agree that that would be okay. Me too. All right, so we're good on that. I'll go to five. Um, anti idling policy we added in um, because we already have one. So that would go somewhere in the vehicle usage section. We had to adopt it as part of being a green community. Much to keep the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it, uh, it's not going to be that. I don't think they realize what goes on, like in the winter operations with like our, our equipment. It, once it's up and operational, uh, you've got to have the go. Hydraulic oils need to be up to temperature. You can't be yeah, you can't be shutting these things off. We don't have like if you come in and take a break, we don't have a place to drive the truck into a heated area. It stays out in the frigid. So I mean, I don't think it's punitive. I, know, I think it's, I know it's it's got to be there to satisfy the green yeah. communities, and yeah. I get that. Yeah. During the summer months, we come in. There's no issue there. It's but it's so. I get it. It's got to be there. Got to be. Uh, the next one. Um, so I confirmed with Lynn that we do have the 720 hour cap and that um, we tightened up the language that it is that for part time employees as well on a prorated basis. But that is the current policy. Yep. Um, I've seen caps of 225 days. Um, I did the math on this, it's 90. so it's 90 days, yep. um, but you do have a sick leave payback. It's one day for every five, isn't it? One, no, one day for five retirement? Years. Yeah. One day five years of for service. year of service, provided right. you have it in the bank or in your yeah, accumulation, yeah, in the bank. but you have to retire. Right. You can't just say, oh, I've worked 10 years and I'm moving on to another job. Right. That's not eligible. Um, so this is very generous, but in the same vein, um, we don't have a lot of generous benefits, especially given that the health insurance contributions at 50%. If you want to consider um, redlining the current employees and changing it for new oncoming employees, um, that's something to consider. I'm just throwing it out there. You can I don't the same. feel it's ever been an issue where it gets somehow abused. Um, I mean, first of all, anytime you would go into it, you need to have doctors. You've got to have a medical reason. It's, you can't just... So it's... I don't feel it should be changed. So um, 720 hours is not 90 days, though, Keith, because three months is 480 hours at 40 it's, hours a week. It's seven, yeah, it is 90 days. Nine times eight is 72. I don't think so. It's no. just, uh, it's. So four weeks of 40 is 160 hours. Three times 160 is 480 hours. So that's three months, right? That's 16 weeks yep. right there. That's 480 hours. 90 days. 70. Yeah, 90, 90 business days, days though. Yeah, yeah. 90 <laughs> business days or, you know, are we talking a three-month period? Because 90 yeah. business days. It's a, so it's more like a five to six-month period. It's business. So 40 hours a week. 40 hours a week. Four weeks in the month. Is hundred and sixty hours. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's a month. Three times one hundred and sixty is four hundred and eighty hours. That's three months. What am I missing? The way I'm looking at it, seven hundred and twenty hours. Yeah. Okay. Divided by you, you work if if you're working on an eight-hour shift. Yeah. And everything else is prorated beyond that. So it takes 720 
divided by eight hours a day is 90 days. Nine times yeah, but, seven, but, but 90 days isn't three months in this case, Keith, because nobody's working seven days a week, eight hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, but that's so you your 90 words. days comes up to 90 well, business days, right? It's not, thank you, Joyce. So, what take, I so 90 take 90 business. divide by five, and you get 45. So it's um, that's 45 weeks. And then 45 weeks mm -hmm. is a heck of a lot. Like, I said, so did I get that wrong? I, I might, I she get my cat going around. I hate to do this, but I have got to drop off. Okay. I trust all of you, whatever you agree with. Agree on. Very I'm fine with. discussion. <laughs> Sorry. Good Bye. luck with the new job, Sue. Thank you. Good Bye. luck. Are we still talking about the sick leave? Because I don't know why my math is coming out so differently. And I think I'm talking about different category. Yeah, we're, sit doing we're sick still leave. talking about it. <laughs> Are we talking about 720 hours of sick leave? To yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Well, seven, if you use a, I, don't, I think that's 18 weeks, isn't it? At a 40 hour work week? If you just do 40 times 18, isn't that 720? No. I don't know. That's where I was coming out, but maybe yeah, I'm looking I'm at it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think you're, no, I think your, your math was right. That's amazing. That is correct. 18, 18 weeks. weeks, which is. Four and a half months. That's very generous from my experience, but if I don't object to it, it's just very generous. I, I agree with Trisha, who said very generous. Is there a reason why it's like that? The cap is so high. It's been this way for God, for almost for I. Like, a long time. I, I would have to, we'd have to research it yeah. to go back to see where it, when that came into play. I mean, basically, in a sense, that is sort of like a, um, like when you have long term disability, mm -hmm. long term disability kicks in after 90 days. Yeah. Maybe that's where it came from. So I don't know. If, if someone had a long term disability policy, they're on their own until they get to 90 days. Yeah. So is this kind of almost like an added benefit in a way? Or it's sort of, I guess you could look at it as sort of a short-term disability if you had, but you got to have those hours in the bank um, or you got to have them in your accumulation. Yeah. Now, another thing that I know we did look at many years ago is with the school, the school, I think, was somewhere in the 15 days a year right. or higher, but they automatically have to put time into a bank every year. You probably had some sick leave bank. Or is sick yeah. you, whereas we don't have a sick leave bank. So you have to work 10 years. You get 15 sick days a year. You have to work you 10 years to have 150 sick days. If you don't use and we only get 10. Right. So 10, 10. get 100 and you're giving nine days it takes a long it takes a long time to to get to, to accumulate that's great i understand that but your sick leave should not be functioning as a short-term disability okay. policy just, the town could offer a short term that's why i was asking if it was if yeah the reason why it was adopted is because it was supposed to replace a short-term or long-term or it was supposed to be an added benefit in some capacity yeah that i, I yeah i, I I don't have that answer as Just to curious. where that, why it was put in at 720. Yeah. And I'm sure that that's the reason, and that might be fine. And, and I'm not suggesting it taking away from employees. No, I'm I get it. I'm trying to think. On the you know, go forward, you might, maybe down the road. And again, we don't have to do that. We can leave it and just raise it as something once we live with them for a while. Um, I just thought. I didn't, could, that might be a question too to ask Lynn. She's been. No, this, I mean, this is the policy. So, no, but yeah. she might have, be able to shed some more light as to where this, why it was adopted. I I don't know other than I know it's been there since I think our first policy, which was in 99. Yeah. So I guess I what's it's been there since 1999. That's fine. Yeah. 
And this is all accumulated, right? So if you, you're using your sick days up as you get sick, it sounds like in a way it's a maybe a little incentive to come into work when you're sick. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're like allowed to save it up um is this something where and this is the thing i'm, I'm um, scrolling through here to try to find is this something that gets paid out when you retire or um the only or leave thing that town, joyce the only thing that town has in the policies is when a, an employee retires you can get paid a one day of sick time uh, if you have it in your accumulated amount, one day of sick time per year of service. Per year, okay. So it's not by how much you. Correct, but you gotta have, now. If you don't have it, if you've already used your sick time for other reasons and you don't have it, then you can't get paid that extra money. Um, the the teachers, okay. I'd have to go back and look and see. The teachers have a pretty. Um, yeah, they get, yeah, just say one day for every year that you work. So if I work 35 days and I have 35 and simply left, I get 35 days paid. Right. And that that's okay. Except I would submit that's still not even approaching 720 hours. 90 days, right. Yeah. Right. Nobody works. Days. So, I mean, maybe there's an in-between there. There's a delta. So, that, yeah, I, yeah. I just, but but I mean, we can leave it. Obviously, we're not changing the current policy, so we can leave it. I was just bringing up I, something. Yeah, yeah. it does. You understand yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Um. So then I have on a one person should be employing um people of their benefits, and that should be Amy. So I think um. I changed that because you have the department has to be responsible for informing the employee about all this stuff. And that's really not what happens if the new employee is a department head. So um, which it doesn't speak to. So I changed that. Um I change F. You can't so even though every employee's at will. Because public employees are entitled to due process because the, under public law, their job is considered their property. So they have all these due process rights. So you just can't fire anybody unless they have um, a due process and a louder mill hearing to know what they're being disciplined for or what they're being fired for. So revocation of a license alone doesn't mean somebody can automatically be fired. So I soften that language. But it could be administrative leave be acceptable well that would be paid administratively pending an investigation which could be written verbal suspension or whatever but um you know keith you could lose your license tomorrow you're not going to get fired because you've been here 40 years okay, but at the same point in time like in my department yes. I, I, I have to drive yeah it's not like I can get brought to my employment and dropped off. You cannot be fired. Okay. Then, then how does the town because protect if you, themselves? Because if you then? lost your license and you have an expectation of getting it back and you have paid vacation time or want to be a leave of absence, or right. you're appealing the revocation of your you license, or you've that. never had discipline in your life, or it's six months before you get your license back and there is uh, someone who can be acting, you cannot be fired for that um, if you've been a model employee and there's been no prior. I mean, yeah. the town can fire you, but they'd lose any lawsuit you brought. Not to mention the unemployment they would pay. Right, and I understand, especially if if that if the employee has the time accumulated, or even go through the process of, of asking for for unpaid time off. You can't. I get that part. But in policies, especially, you have to be careful of making wide sweeping general statements. I mean, you already say everybody's a, a an at will employee and can be you know, let go at any time. And I just saw that 
in Conway's bylaw somewhere. And that's true, but that doesn't negate somebody's due process to have had progressive discipline and due process based on the severity of any alleged incident that they're being disciplined for. So um, I would, again, just, if you can be, okay. you know, it's sometimes the level of specificity in this is just 110 pages. So, um, so again, um, I just, I think okay. I just, struck that part. I just said, um, if I, I think I said up to and including termination or something like that, but I think the language you said, revocation of the license will result in termination. And that was, it was too okay. strong. Okay. I'm just um, going to say, can I just say, I, I'm not disagreeing with anything that was just said, but Keith, if it ever came up in your department, I think if driving is an essential component of your job, there has got to be an exception to that law. I mean, if you, I don't know that you couldn't sideline people who lost their license in your department and find other things for them to do. But if your sole job is a limousine driver and you lose your license, I just don't think, I just think of a central component of your job is driving and you're legally unable to do that. There's got to be some leeway. I'm, I'm only saying that for your experience, not for the handbook. Right. The only thing is, is that after you've worked 10 years and you're entitled to a pension and you get fired, then the retirement board weighs in on whether or not you could have been fired. And, you know, so it becomes really messy. And, all I'm, and I don't disagree with you either, Brenda. I'm just saying to have a personnel policy that says that is something we want to backpedal a little on. That's all. If it's an essential function of your job, that certainly is there all the time. But... You know. Yep. No, I totally agree with everything. Keith, yep. If it was Keith and he's going to retire next year and we suddenly fired him, it would be. So don't lose your license. <laughs> but um, I also see that that's where it may it may come down to a scenario where if a driver is needed, then and then the that employee has time available yeah. and. The town may have to go out and hire somebody part time while this is happening. It's like a workers' compensation injury, right? right? Yeah. If I you're can dead. See, yeah, I see that. Um, so this one, G, page fourteen on me. The reasons for rejection. Um, I don't know. I I need your help on this. So it says. You know, somebody may not be selected because they did not meet the minimum qualifications, but we also always have this phrase in advertisements and job descriptions of any equivalent combination of education and experience. So just want you to be aware that those two things don't sync with each other. That's in recruitment at the beginning. So in reasons for rejection, we have does not meet minimum. You know, the reason somebody won't be selected is because they don't meet the minimum qualifications. But when you're talking about um, qualifications for recruitment and selection, you talk about minimum, you know, any equivalent combination of experience. That's a standard phrase when you're advertising for positions. G14. Reasons for rejecting. The appointing authority may reject any applicant who does not possess the minimum qualifications for the position. So that's okay, except that when you advertise for a position, you always have a catch all phrase that says, bachelor's degree plus two years of minimum experience or any equivalent combination, which is the safety net for not meeting the minimum right. qualifications. Yes. But you say here, you can reject, you will, you may reject any applicant. So I don't know, Brenda, is the may permissive enough to cover our basis there? Because it doesn't say shall reject, it just says may. I think it is permissive enough and not okay. too mandatory, but yeah. I, 
Okay. So we might be okay then. All right. That one was easy. And then again, that's just a reiteration of what I just said on the driver's license from the to your attention. And then G is the meal breaks, which I changed. And then just performance evaluations. Once this gets adopted, then the new town administrator needs to understand we got to implement that. Yes. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Um, anybody else have any other? I have one. One very small thing, and I I think I missed a meeting, so I may have missed this, and you might have discussed it. So on page thir 26, I'm sorry, of the version that I have, which is going to be pretty close to any version you have, number three, L, violations of employer's meal and break policy. I just think there's two paragraphs there that say slightly different but almost identical things, and maybe we just intended to, unless I'm missing something, because I think I did miss that meeting, strike maybe the first paragraph. So again, I'm under violations of employer's meal and break period policy, and maybe it's correct in the draft you guys are looking at. Inspection. Employees who take unauthorized meal periods, extended authorized meal periods beyond approved limits or work during meal periods without authorization are subject to discipline up to including termination according to the policy. And then you think that second sentence is redundant, Brenda? Seems like, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I, they're kind of the same, but they're slightly different, but they're yeah. covered the same ground. Unless I'm missing something, because the first one has like what seems to be people working through lunch and leaving a half an hour early because they work through lunch or something. I don't know. I can't tell what yeah, I, it seems like they're both duplicative and conflicting. Yeah, so one talks about meal periods and one talks about break periods. So oh, we oh, that, oh. I can lose okay. that, but yep. I don't see why we just can't lose that second paragraph and just say unauthorized meal and break periods. That's all and lose it all together. Yeah, unauthorized. I can do that. Oh, so what I missed was meal versus break. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, whatever the practice actually is. Yeah, the catch. Maybe just break or meal or whatever. Were there among those many bones, some that had been uh, All right, any other comments? I know one thing that it will have to be addressed also in the near future is when we, when and if we fund the wage and classification study, that as a result of that, when it gets implemented, that'll need to be brought in here to change because presently it says under the roles of the personnel committee to the way we go about doing our annual review and recommendations, that'll have to change. So that's something we'll just have to, to keep in mind. I have one more, and that is under recruitment and selection. And that would be to eliminate the requirement that says vacancies need to be advertised in the newspaper, um, which I don't know if you read the classifieds in the Recorder or the Gazette, but you would have found that we were the only community with an advertisement for town administrator or zone board or whatever. I mean, it's really there's still a few, but. So I think we can make it not eliminate it so much as make it discretionary. Discretion, okay. Um, it's section request for vacancies. 
section on safe under hiring, which is section two, 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 But it just occurred to me because we've been filling a lot of vacant fields. How much does it cost do you think that we've done with this now? Even two members? Yeah, it's two or three hundred dollars. It's expensive. Yeah, depending on what I could keep that this sum we want, but for others, can't find it. It's Recruitment. Three, three A notice of an applicant. Yes, notice of the town manager. Because it says the town administrator and the appointing authority review and approve all job notices prior to advertisement and posting. Which, da, da, da. Notice for vacancies are posted. Blah blah blah. May additionally be posted online and the town's website and local newspaper it's, it's it had been it, they used to be a shell and it was taken that word was we crossed that out and it said may so it doesn't say it has to be it may also be posted it may also be posted in the, on the town's website right. and local newspaper so Maybe we just have to reiterate that it's discretionary. Mm -hmm. All right. Either way, yeah, that's. And there's certainly different, in this day and age, different jobs require different ways of advertising. So if you read this, though, closely, it says, may be additionally posted online on the town's website. It should say may additionally be a posted online comma. Not online on the town's website, but online. Yeah, okay. Comma. And on or comma yeah. the town's website. Yes, you're right. So that way it can be posted on LinkedIn. It can, things like that. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah, right. All right. Okay. All right. That way. All right. That's good. Okay. All right. I'm done. Now that we put the last comma. <laughs> the last comma. The last comma. Does anybody have anything else on that? Has any departments made any? Comments on it? Just, just the one Cindy from the library wrote right. about yes. and, and only else? Yes. Oh, okay. And well, it had two, yeah. two swipes at it. Okay. I was just yeah. wondering. I, I would have thought I would have been here. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. You did it twice. As okay. Yeah. okay. So at this point in time, I think we can, we're at the point where we can, would recommend that it be presented to the sun board. Need to make a motion to do that. Okay. Make a motion to uh, send it to the select board. Second. Okay. I have a motion made and second to present this bylaw, bylaws, the personal policy and bylaws to the select board as amended. I'll do a roll call vote. Brenda? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself? Aye. Pastor Janaris. Can I just ask, unless I might be missing something, but I know we keep referring to them as bylaws, but it's, isn't the personnel policy, isn't bylaws a whole different animal? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, that could not You're be part right. of it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Let's go. Sorry. Sorry. Annoying. Yeah. So I will um, accept all the track changes, renumber, relet it, ask Jess to look at them, yep. and send them out Sorry. before the 28th select board meeting, okay. hopefully. Again, done, but I can do the next extra two. Oh, no. Okay.
<laughs> Any other items? Yes. Um, the select board is reviewing uh, use of the ARPA funds at its meeting tomorrow night. And um, there is a request that um, we put in for funding the wage and classification study. So um, I'll let, be able to let you know whether or not that goes forward or not. At the 12 or at the set, what was the so the quote that I got was 12,000 with job descriptions, 7,000 without. And speaking with Lynn, she thinks that our job descriptions are pretty good shape, but need to be updated, um, which uh, would require commitment and work on the part of staff to do that. So I got some updated position analysis questionnaires um, from two towns that I will um, appropriate and create for us, and then it would really require a commitment on the part of supervisors and their employees to update it, attach their current job description, and then that way um, we could um, just solicit some quotes. It's under 10,000 for 30B, and um, Pete could hit the ground running to maybe get it done. So we might be in a position by next um, budget, season. budget season to know what the impact is then. So, yeah. But again, that's uh, a board agenda item. Yep, so right. nothing's, nothing. but I think we've laid some good groundwork at finance um, this year, right, Brenda, to um, at least. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So that's so, all I had to update you on that. Okay, and one one thing that I asked just to um, print out, she did for me, but I would, and it's in regards to job description, and that is, um, I in the highway department, the present senior slash operator laborer is retiring in July, and it would be, I feel we should just review the job description again before we look to fill that position. The one thing in historically I can tell you about it is previously the position was called a work informant. And at the time that person who left about six, six, maybe seven years ago, the wording got changed to a senior operator labor because but so working foreman, it implies that that's your primary responsibility as your foreman and, and would expect to take a and work with a work by yourself with another with a, an employee or two. And in this case, the only time that the this person is making decisions is in my absence, is in the absence of the high racer. So I sort of think that the, the language and where it stands right now as a senior operator implies that maybe age or experience something at age definitely might be thought of as why is it say senior. If you don't have seniority, doesn't necessarily mean that you would be the position, the person that would be operating in that position. Um, so I just want to, I think we need to look at it and discuss it before we hire a new employee. Are you saying the title senior could be misleading? I think it, it can be construed, but maybe that's just me. I, the more I think about it, I, I, I think you might be thinking too much into it. Okay. I think, I think you're looking at it in a different angle than people would look at it. Because when I think of it, I don't think, I think I need to have a little more experience, but I don't think that it's an, essentially an older person's right. position. You know yeah. what I mean? Then, That's just my opinion yep. though. I okay. Personally, I don't think. And maybe you're right. Maybe I am, but I just, I'm just feeling like we should you at least Job description needs to change at all, or just the title? I, I'm going to read through it. Are you just yeah. printed it? Let me just read through it. Why, and I would suggest that you know we could 
send it up to the committee. You should take a position analysis questionnaire. Okay. That include that. Okay. That will work. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. That's a problem. You didn't see it. Have it customized. Okay. Well, anyways, that was all I had. It's not something that's going to be done today or tomorrow. Do you have, um, Something in mind? Do I have someone in mind? Something in mind for the title? As a title? Um, just I'm trying to, I, I don't know. I, I don't know like what else they, I don't know what else, it's, it's what clear, other titles that Yeah, they, it's they clear that about. it should, I agree that when it, when it said working foreman previously, yeah. that is, a, that could be, Someone can look at that position and say, well, geez, I, I'm not I'm not doing much work as a foreman, I'm not, or that is really not what a foreman does. Yeah. All right, well. I think you. Anything else? Uh, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So are we not looking at other dates? Are we done? I honestly, or I think we, at this point we don't this, need anything until we're asked. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Yep. So was so I uh, I there was a motion to adjourn. Yeah. From I have me. a motion made. Second. Second. Do a roll call vote, Joyce. Aye. Brenda? Aye. Betty? Aye. Myself? Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.